today I want to talk about the ESP32 and an update on the lithium ion battery cell monitor and I show you my progress in this project. So as you see I got the ordered PCBs and also all the components and I sold uh, the most of the components to the board beside the ESP32 so I can use a development board with a USB connection to my prototype board and I goofed up the footprint of the voltage regulator so I have to order new PCBs and this takes some weeks to be delivered because I just used the cheapest delivery method that's available. So most of the parts I already can test and can test the functionality of this cell monitor. So there's a little bit delay in this project but most of the parts I can test today. So first of the PCB I soldered the ESP32 connection to the I2C line, the SDA and clock pin. Then I have an alarm pin on a GPIO pin and also the GPIO pins for the MOSFETs that steers the some kind of electronic load for the cell balancing. And to keep things a little bit simpler I just put all the MOSFETs in parallel so they are all switching at the same GPIO pin but in the future we can use all four pins to drive them individually. Next we have the four MOSFETs with the load resistors for each individual MOSFET and the SI7060 temperature sensor with an I2C interface and then we also see the INA 219 the zero drift voltage and current and power monitoring chip and also the current sense resistor with 100 milliohms and you see also the footprint for the voltage regulator but as already told this is a little bit goofed up so the footprint don't fit the dimensions of the chip and I find no way to solder it in this way that the footprints are so I have to rearrange my board and just do a new revision and order new PCBs and now we can turn the PCB around and on the back side we see the second temperature sensor for the cells and also the two pull-up resistors for the I2C lines. So this is the test source code I've written and most of the parts are just standard libraries like the UHG2 library and the INA219 library. There's also the library for the SA7060 and there's no example I found on the internet so maybe this is the first time someone has written a library for this chip and I use this chip because it's so cheap and also stable and easy to use. So we have some registers to read and can also write something and if you want to know more this is also the same thing from the library. So first of all we have the I2C address, we have four different chips with four different addresses and the alarm pin is an open drain output. The register is somewhere here defined so we have some register values and we can use this to set the alarm level and some kind of hysteresis and also we read the 16-bit high and low value for the temperature and that's it. So we go back to the normal source code. I initialize the wire interface, the U8G2 library, the MOSFET pins and set also the alarm pin for an input and also initialize the INA219 chip. And in the loop we just read out the two temperature sensor variable so we prepare the reading and then read the temperature and just print them and send after this the chip to in some kind of sleep mode and the same for the second chip with a second address and then we read out the alarm value so we can see if we have reached our alarm level and after this we read out the voltage and current values from the INA219 chip just print all everything in some kind of strings and just put them on the display. This is a small development board within 
display. So this is the SDD 1306, 128 by 64 pixels. And that's it. So here we see the test cycle on the display. And before we reach the 4.2 volt level, the load is switched off. And after we switch on the external voltage source, then we immediately reach the level. And so we can see the current flow from about 1.8 ampere. So we have an power from about 8 watts flowing through the small SMD resistors. But this is there are 2 watt resistors so they can handle this. And on the temperature reading we see that the PCB are getting very hot in a very small time. So after we reach the alarm level of the board then the alarm pin is going to high and immediately the load is switched off from the ESP32. And then the PCB is cooled down and after is the low value of the alarm then the load is switched on again. And this is repeated every time. And if we switch off the high voltage input then we can see the, the whole board is cooling down again and we can repeat the test cycle. So if you have some comments or maybe suggestions or find even some errors in my code or in my design, please write it in the comments so we can share all the result of the project. Thanks for watching today and I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching. I wish you a nice day. See you next time and bye bye.